All right, how's it going, boils and ghouls? So, apologies that I couldn't get this video and the other movie that won the poll, Wes Craven's New Nightmare, out last night. I watched The Fun House, so I'm just going to be skimming through it here. So, Toby Hooper's The Fun House. Every time I watch this film, and this is not a slasher movie at all. Like, I say this every time I rewatch it, too. Like, it always gets lumped in with the slasher genre. It's not. There's people who die, yes. Like, but they're not being slashed, they're not being stabbed, not, there's not a high body count or anything like that. It's not a slasher. This is just a, more of a, for me, a creature feature. When you find out what this goddamn weird thing is. But every time I rewatch this, up until a certain scene, and we'll we'll talk about it because it's it's one hell of a scene. I always sit there and thinking that I don't like this movie as much as I always remember liking it every time I watch it. Until we pass that scene, uh, then I just remind myself and say, "Oh wait, that's right. I do love this movie." It's a very weird one for me, like on rewatches. But had a blast rewatching it. Let's talk the Fun House from Toby Hooper, who turned down E.T. because he was working on this shit. <laughs> I mean, he went on to work with Spielberg with uh, Poltergeist, obviously, but he missed the opportunity of a lifetime. One thing I can always say, like, with Hooper is just the visual imagery in this movie is fantastic. Same as Texas Chainsaw, Texas Chainsaw 2, like, uh, Eaten Alive, all of his films. The way that he captures insanity and depravity on the screen he has such a big gift with that he has such a talent to be able to shoot things such a certain way that it feels like you're watching like an acid trip like a terrible one <laughs> like as in you wouldn't want to be there it's insane just the way that he captures the craziness that this film builds to it's just fantastic so that's a huge plus for this movie i like the cast here, for the most part, they don't really stand out much, but I've always liked the main chick, uh, Amy, I think her name is. It doesn't matter about any of these names. Always liked her and her boyfriend, or the date that she goes to this carnival with. So if anyone hasn't seen The Fun House, here's like a short synopsis. Basically, four people, they go on a double date. She's not supposed to be leaving the house, so they sneak out. But the brother knows, her little brother. And... They end up sneaking out, and the four of them go out to this carnival, and just chaos ensues as the film goes on, and they find out that there is something uh, very sinister lurking in the funhouse. So we get an homage here to Halloween in the beginning, and the score, too, is, is great in this. Like, and the, the whole feel of this movie, Toby Hooper captures the funhouse and carnival feel in this movie, like perfectly like it feels like you're at the carnival it's just so familiar like to all of us we've all been to a carnival so we get an homage to halloween in the beginning here from the little brother's pov and he reaches for a clown mask off the wall and then puts it on and then his sister's showering the main girl in the shower where the fuck else is she gonna shout <laughs> and he comes up and starts going to stab her what a Dick, this brother is. Are you serious? Who pulls a prank like this and puts a mask on? He, this kid's like 10 years old. So, I mean, yeah, 10 year olds probably. <laughs> 11, 12, who knows what he is. But still, what a messed up thing to do to your sister. She's completely naked. We get some tits. So, that's just September. And then we get like a, probably is a psycho homage here too. And starts stabbing her in the shower. She's trying to hold it the knife and it turns out it's a rubber knife and she goes to kill this kid <laughs> i was just thinking something because these this is why you don't do these type of pranks on anyone but this girl handles it very tamely like she would have died if that was a real killer <laughs> if that was a real person who broke into her house <laughs> and tried stabbing her in the shower she'd be screwed because she puts up no fight except for just holding the knife and this is against her little brother <laughs> if that was me and somebody opened my shower curtain with a mask on and a knife. they're getting kicked in the face like immediately. The father of the main chick ends up mentioning to her that there were bodies found at this carnival or, or where it was before, like something like that. And he tells her that they had to identify the bodies with dental records. 
I mean, just like with that, man, like, wouldn't you not want to go there? And she's smart because she actually says this to her date. She says, like, you want to go to the movies instead because it's that carnival that went through Fairfield County and it had all that trouble. I mean, it was a little more than trouble. Uh, then her date is the whole reason that they end up going here <laughs> and getting killed and shit. She really does try, like I said. But they, he just says it's your dad trying to ruin your night. And she, she even has a good uh, response to that. When she says, how can you say that? You don't even know my dad. He's not trying to ruin your night. He's trying to save your damn life. So <laughs> props for being a good father, dad of main character. He, he does die in this movie. But if the date didn't die in this movie... He ain't getting a call for a second date, I can say that. Amy is her name, the main character. So, I was good on that. Maybe if her name is Amy, I'll call her Blamey. And yeah, just Hooper absolutely nails the carnival feeling here. Just when they first get there, with the music playing, and all the rides, and games. And Buzz is the uh, date's name. Let's Buzz. <laughs> Slumber Party Massacre 2. There's a funny line that Richie, beep beep, Richie. His girlfriend that he's there with, the blonde, that he's saying that, like, oh, they're hitting it all fine. And obviously they're not because she's kind of mad at him for taking her to her, what will become known to her as a killer carnival. <laughs> so he's saying, like, he's a terrific guy. Of course they're getting along. And his girlfriend tells him, babe, even Charles Manson is a terrific guy when you're stoned. That's so funny. Remember when I was saying, what if the brother at the beginning was actually a killer who broke into this house? She should be more worried about that because this house is very easy to break out of because <laughs> the brother sneaks out to go like tail them to the carnival and they were driving a decent amount but they did have to pick their friends up so i don't know how far away it is but this kid's dedicated but he's able to just climb out of the house too so if she knows her and her brother can both get out of the house like very easily she should be more worried about people being able to get in that house so i read this fun fact there's a ride here that you see a few shots of that it has octopus legs, like, and it spins around. They left the ride on by mistake for, like, a half hour. They had, like, bad motion sickness, and they had to call an ambulance and stuff. Nobody was, like, hurt, but that's hilarious. Even the actors that Hooper picked to play, like, the carnies and the ride attendants, they all look like they belong there. Like, they look like they're from a traveling carnival. I wouldn't be surprised if some of these people were. I didn't look into that. But they look how they're supposed to. Like, greasy scam artists like they are. We get to see a cool two-headed cow in this movie. So if you've never seen one, that's a plus. And then the brother is walking to the carnival, and some guy pulls over and says, You want to ride? And he's smart, doesn't want to get in there. And the guy just pulls a shotgun out <laughs> and points it at this kid. And then he's like, <gasps> and then he, he gets in the car. It, it's such a weird scene. It's also pretty cool that they go into the main feature for, like, the freak show part, and they see, like, a deformed baby or fetus or whatever in a jar. And at first you would just think, all right, this is just one of those fake carnival things. But it actually makes sense that that could be a real mutation. That could be real because we see how Gunther, the monster, looks in this movie. <laughs> and he's deformed as hell. That's actually most likely like one of their babies or something. Which if you have one kid that comes out the way Gunther's looking, like why go for a second one? I love the guy who announces uh, like the fun house and starts saying like, once you come in the fun house, then there's no release. Like who's man enough to come in here? And it's freaking the hell out of Amy. Great little scene there. Uh, then, of course, her stupid friend comes and jump scares the hell out of her. I hate that. Uh, then the brother is just at the carnival, like, buying tickets and stuff. So that guy with the shotgun just pulled a gun on a random kid just to get, give him a ride <laughs> and let him go. The line from the brother when he asked, who was giving him tickets or change, whatever it was, when he asks her, have you seen four people both on the double date? Are you kidding me? What kind of question is that? Like, there's mad people at this carnival. There's probably a bunch of double dates here. I love the whole scene with the magician. He plays it well, and I love how Buzz ends up, like, trying to raise Amy's hand to go up there. This guy already ruined her night and just doesn't know it yet. He's still trying to get her more involved. And then he picks someone from the audience and pretends that he messes up and kills her. She's in one of those boxes, and he takes a stake. He gives this whole backstory on Vlad the Impaler. That's cool. And then he takes the stake and he 
puts it into the box and blood comes out and it looks like she's dead and everyone freaks out screaming. Great stuff. But like, again, don't play pranks like that. Like, what if there's a cop in the audience or something and he pulled his gun on you? <laughs> you never know. There's such macabre jokes here. And then we find out that it's his daughter, the magician, who helps him with his tricks. And then after he takes his daughter out of the box and says, this is my daughter, he says, the next show in two hours. That's the whole show? It's one trick? And these people hate magicians, because there's at least three people that scream out in the middle of his act, like, get a new profession and stuff like that. They hate magicians, apparently. I love the whole scene with the fortune teller. And the score is great. The atmosphere is just fantastic in this movie. I always loved how this movie feels. When she's giving Amy and telling her her fortune, and they just smoked a joint, so she's telling Amy her fortune and like predicting her future, and they're laughing hysterically in the background. <laughs> That's great. It's a small detail, but I love this shot here. When the, the psychic woman tells them all to get out, and that she performed in front of like crowned heads in Europe and stuff like that, like kings and shit, she drops her crystal ball, and I love the shot of it rolling, and it pans with it to in between Amy's feet, and then it comes back and rolls into her hands. I think there's a lot of charm to the fact that the brother is there at the carnival. He's supposed to be looking for his sister and stuff, or like spying on them. But he's like riding rides and playing games and shit. <laughs> That's cool. That's funny. So then the brother goes into the fun house and gets in the car and goes in for the first time. And we get the first look at Gunther, the monster, in his Frankenstein getup. The mask with the gloves, which I think that's great. He's not just deformed in his face. It's, he has claws and stuff. So I think it's a cool little touch that the, he has gloves on also to hide that. Honestly, I think it's more creepy if he was killing these people later on with the Frankenstein mask. Like, cause his face is cool underneath. It's, it's creepy, but it doesn't look the best. And it, correct me if I'm wrong. I'm almost positive on this. Rick Baker did effects on this. So that's weird to me, because, I mean, it, it looks good, like I said, but it, it looks like a mask. <laughs> so it doesn't look the best. Give you one tip. If my father told me not to go to this carnival, because the last location they were in, they found bodies that needed their dental records to identify, and then seeing some of the, just the weird stuff here that happens before they go in the funhouse... I'm out. I'm leaving immediately. The pacing is a little slow. The first half hour, like, you're, you're still being shown around the carnival and the different attractions, but that's also why it does work. Because I get that they're trying to immerse you into this carnival. They're trying to show you around all the carnies and the, the attractions. So it does work. It's just a little bit slow for me. I also think it's funny that there's like a peep show, and I'm pretty sure these were like local like Florida strippers that they use. <laughs> and they're not 21, so they can't get into the tent that it's in to see it. So they go around the back, and he takes out his knife, uh, Buzz, and he cuts a little hole in it, like Porky style, so they can like peep through there. That's great, too. So then Richie, beep beep, comes up with this brilliant idea stay overnight in this fun house he said that a few people have done it before and funny enough they all go for it they say yeah <laughs> i don't know why they all agreed on this so quickly and right after he pitches that idea amy's on the phone calling her mom saying she's staying at blondie your friend's house to stay in a fun house in a traveling carnival where bodies were found <laughs> that they needed dental records to identify i don't know man that fat Asian giggling animatronic that's right on the top of the fun house. Very creepy. Like, very effective with her laugh and everything. It, it, it does make you feel uneasy. But they end up going into the fun house for the first time. They get in the little cars and they go through it. And yeah, all the lighting from here on, like in the fun house itself, is fantastic. There's a bunch of great usage of colored lighting with reds and greens like i can't say enough how he just nails everything the fun house feeling the whole carnival feeling in general like great so like i said this is a traveling carnival that bodies were found in the last location i could see them getting away with it once 
but like now a second time like aren't they they're going to be in trouble right especially if they show up these bodies and so mangled that they also have to identify them with their dental records because it's the same mo right so then the funhouse power shuts down the whole carnival shuts down and they leave the funhouse like remember the guy who was announcing it the father of gunther and he starts saying like once you went to the funhouse there's no escape they just left now <laughs> i mean they go back in but just thought I pointed out that I love the creepy old woman who we saw earlier uh, scaring the uh, main group, saying, God's looking at you and God's watching you. And then she proceeds to scare the living shit out of the little brother and he runs away. <laughs> That's a great character. So all four of them end up sneaking into the fun house and they're just hanging out and making out more tits. Slasher September. Even though this isn't really a slasher film, like I said, at all. Then they hear a sound. And they stop making out, tits go away. And they go and try to investigate it. And this is the scene that I said earlier at the very beginning that I question how much I like this movie until this scene. I then think it just ramp up and I love it again. The scene when they're looking down here, like through the grate, and they're looking down at the psychic woman and Gunther and the Frankenstein mask, and she gives him a hand job. It's so weird. <laughs> This scene is so crazy, but then for some reason, after the scene passes, then I always remember how much I love this movie. Not because of this scene, but like everything after this. The the actress who plays the psychic, she asked Hooper after they shot this scene, "Did I just blow my career?" I mean, possibly. I've never seen her ass again. And if watching Frankenstein get jerked off is your thing, I'm pretty sure this is the only movie you can see it. The four of them, don't forget, are watching all of this from above. So they see him get his hand job. He comes in two seconds, and then he wants his money back, she thinks. And he ends up shutting the door. And he takes her and pushes her up against the fuse box or power or whatever and electrocutes her. But then the way all the animatronics start coming on and working because of the power disruption, I don't know how that works, but it, that's what I mean with Toby Hooper, the way that he's able to capture that just insanity on film. Because, I mean, getting choked out into a fuse box is not the best kill in the world. But then all of the animatronics laughing and making the sounds and stuff, that's what feels so unsettling about it. And it feels very tourist trap, actually, this scene. Now that I'm thinking about it and watching it again, it kind of reminds me of a few of the scenes in Tourist Trap when all of the mannequins start laughing and coming to life. I wonder if he was inspired by that. And this woman, she knows... He's a freak under that mask because she calls him a freak and it's assumed that she knows them and travels around with them because she said, I'm going to tell your father, like if he hurts her, can't tell him nothing if he kills her, which he does, but they travel together all the time. This, this bitch is charging him. Like, isn't he like a friend at this point or something? Also, the sound design is fantastic in this movie and it's something you really notice during scenes like that, like with all the laughter and, and all those sounds coming out. The sound design's great. So then they freak the hell out because they just witnessed a murder and they're going to try to get out of there. And now is the time that you can't leave the fun house. So then Richie, they're trying to escape and get out of there. And Richie stops and says, wait a minute, I just want to go make sure she's dead. Come on, what do you think she's doing? That she's just faking it? So then we find out that the guy who announces for the fun house and probably owns it is the father of Gunther the monster here. Love his performance. He really looks like a grimy murderer, basically. <laughs> so then we have the father comes and he sees that his son, the monster, killed the psychic woman. And he's trying to think of a way to get out of this. And he's like, we'll say it's an accident. And then he says out loud, nah, no one's going to buy that. But then he says, let's blame it on the locals. The locals murdered somebody. I mean, isn't that what you did the last time? He says it like it's a new idea. Like, he's never done it before. So I wonder what they said last time when they were questioned surely after there was bodies that were found at this carnival, right? So then the father ends up yelling at Gunther and saying, where's the rest of my money? The I think it was like a hundred bucks. A hundred dollars for a hand job from someone you travel with. I don't know. He ends up asking him where that rest of money is and he starts having a tantrum and he starts 
breaking everything. He's yelling at his son, like, that's it, hit yourself before I hit you. And then he takes his mask off, and we see that face for the first time. The face only a mother can love. I mean, his real face doesn't look that great, but I do like, like, the split here in the middle of him, and just the white hair looks cool. Like, it's not bad. It's over the top, but it, it's fun. Then, stupid Richie, beep beep, drops his lighter, and it falls through the grate and to the ground. So they know that there's people in this funhouse that just saw what happened. And that's right, Richie steals some of the money from this guy before the father comes in and starts blaming uh, Gunther. Forgot all about that. So, idiot times two. The little brother is still at the, at the carnival. Almost at the park. I mean, same thing, amusement park, carnival. He ends up opening the banner, one of the banners underneath the funhouse. And there's a hole there. So, I mean, there is a way out, like right there. But he gets the shit scared out of him by Gunther because he's going opening looking in and then Gunther's face pops out and he tries grabbing him and he runs away and then he gets grabbed by another carny great scene too so this is a cool scene with Richie he's telling a story about how he tried to jump scare his brother like by hiding in his closet when he was a kid and then he had the thought what if he knows I'm in here and he tries scaring me and he that's what happened the, the brother ended up locking his this guy in a closet for three hours. He pissed his pants, he says, right before a skeleton pops up and a noose comes down right around his neck and pulls him up into the ceiling. And then, <laughs> great touch here. They have money raining down afterwards because he stole their money. Probably my favorite scene in the movie when the car comes around on the track and Richie's body's in there with the axe sticking in his head and just the laughter again of the, the animatronics and robots and clowns and shit like that you hear everywhere. It, it's so creepy. Like, it really does work right here. Then the blonde, Richie's girlfriend, ends up falling through a trap door, so she's gone too now. This is funny, and this is unique. You don't see this often. I was about to say in a slasher film, but it's not a slasher film. But you don't see this too often in any genre, really. Amy is that big industrial fan, and the shadows it casts, the lighting is great here, this whole scene. And she's trying to scream out at her parents who come to pick up the brother because... I guess one of the carnies who quoted him earlier called his house and had his parents come get him. So at least they don't kill children, like little children. And she's screaming out of the fan, trying to scream at her parents, mother, daddy, like all that. And of course they don't hear her, but it's, it's a cool scene. You don't see that often when like people who are going, are getting killed one by one, that a p parent or something shows up, uh, then hope is there. Uh, then hope is just taken right away when they leave. That's cool. One thing I also can say is that the characters' decisions in this movie are pretty smart compared to usual movies. Like I said, the brother who doesn't get in the car with the with the guy who pulled the gun on him and forced him to, but he didn't just well, willy nilly just jump into a stranger's van. I am thirty five years old. I am divorced, and I live. In a van down by the river. Her at the beginning, um, about listening to her father and not wanting to go here in the first place. Then we see the blonde after she fell through the trap door with the industrial fan going. Again, it looks great. And then the monster comes. And she starts saying to him, because she feels that there's a, a utensil behind her. Some type of pointy, stabby utensil. I can't tell what it is. But she sees it there. So she starts telling him, like, I know you like girls. Like, I can make you feel good. Like, and you don't have to pay any money. Smart. Because then he tries getting on top of her, and she stabs him from behind. But he's still alive, and she dies. I also love his crazy screams throughout this whole movie. The monster. Like I said, the sound design's fantastic. So then Gunther's father is trying to kill Buzz and trying to stab him with something through the chest. And he has a gun that he ends up pulling two shots out and ends up killing the father who just dies standing up <laughs> like he's just like this standing on his feet gunther pops down and uh, then chases the two of them cool that there's a prop in this i never knew this and I, I i read it there's a prop in the scene where buzz gets killed that rob zombie used in house of a thousand corpses like that's really cool it makes me wonder if rob zombie was inspired by this movie i'm sure he probably was for the murder ride in House of a Thousand Corpses. Because the color and lighting used here is, like I said, just fantastic. All this part, like from the 30, 40 minute mark on inside the funhouse, like he did such a good job with 
making it feel like an actual fun house, a creepy place. Really cool how Amy ends up trapping uh, Gunther at the end here. That she, he's like in the middle of gears because they're in like a room with a bunch of pulleys and mechanics going on, and she jams it, and it ends up crushing him to death. Like that's cool, and he's screaming his head off like always. I'll say this about the girl who plays Amy: her performance is great in the end scenes here because she looks like she is shitting her pants <laughs> of what's happening and just when he drops down before she kills him from the ceiling and she sees the face and him screaming right in front of her she looks terrified like good job on her part yeah great stuff because <laughs> she just ends up killing him crushing him in the gears there's electricity going off all over the place it's, it's very intense and it's very hooper like how i mentioned with the pacing in this at the, like the first half hour or so I mean, it's pretty much the same with a lot of his movies. There's a slow build-up, uh, then just it just evolves and grows until it's just carnage and insanity all over the place. Same thing here. Then it's daytime. We see that creepy Asian animatronic bitch on the top of the funhouse, and she gets out, and it's daytime, and she's freaking out at the clown Asian thing. And then she just tears are coming down her face. Her makeup's all messed up, and she just walks walks home i guess <laughs> fun movie fun house what more do you need this is a great hooper film this is a great horror film it's just not a slasher film this is totally just a creature feature a murdering creature feature but always a good watch so that's the fun house from 81 take care guys